I'm fucked. I am very tired. Good morning. There's lots of bleeps and bongs in here this morning. It is six. It's just gone six. I'm just about to head up the M1 to go to Milton Keynes, go and have a look at this. It's a fuse board change. Um, I don't know if I can get any recording in there today. I've got to ask him when I get there, but I think I will. So give me, it's going to take me in about an hour to get to Milton Keynes. So give us an hour and we'll, uh, we'll touch base in a little while. McRae. I'm early, so I'm doing sod all until I have some breakfast. Right, while well, I'm sat here about to have my pancakes, I know people are banging on about, you know, eating healthy and stuff, but right now I just need to get work done. But what we can do is while I'm doing this, we can go through a little bit of housekeeping, some common questions which keep shut, which keep coming up. Stop swearing, Tom. People don't like it. Oh, that was, yeah, that's the first thing. Look, this whole swearing thing, look, at the end of the day, this is who I am. If people don't like it, then with the grace to respect, go and watch something else. I don't care, all right? I'm saying that in the nicest possible way. Oh, actually, the other thing. This, okay, this whole thing of safe isolation. Okay, this seems to be... I think people are struggling to work out whether I'm being serious or whether I'm taking the piss in some of the things that I say. So, all right, safe isolation. I am a firm believer in safe isolation, okay? Where it is practical and possible, it should be done. However, in the real world, it just doesn't work that way, okay? I do not care what anyone says. That is how it is. In the real world, it can't be done. We were working in the city the other day. I'll give you an example, right? These big tower blocks in the city, right? Every floor has got its own distribution panel and then attached to that obviously is the sub main going down to the basement with all the isolators. So a standard setup. Now, technically, I mean, if you're doing this by the book, technically that board should be dead before you even take the cover off. You know, it should be. Technically, that board should be dead before you start working on it. But in the real world, it doesn't work like that. You walk down to the manager down in the in, on the ground floor and say, excuse me, I just need to knock off all the power for the third floor while I put a ring in. <laughs> You'll get two words and the second one will be off, you know? Sorry, let me just turn that panel off and just switch off 250 computers. Yeah, all right. Servers, how do you think things like servers work? Every single floor's got a server. How the fuck do you turn the panel off without turning the server off? You know, <laughs> sorry, everyone's just lost all their data because Tom had to put a radial in on a 16 amp fuse. Yeah, all right. <laughs> I'll give you another example. Clothing store, Tottenham Court Road. I went there at about half eight on, it was half eight on, a, I don't know, it was Tuesday, Wednesday, I can't remember. But anyway, got there. Um, no power to the sockets on the first floor. It was a split level shop. So ground, first floor, got there. No power, first floor sockets. Now the store opens in half an hour. What do you do? You can't turn around to the fucking manager and say sorry, but you know, oh, you know, I've got to perform safe isolation. Your whole fuse board in this entire shop has to be switched off. Yeah, all right. You go to the manager on a fucking store at 10 o'clock in the morning. Sorry, I've got to knock all your power off. You can't have your tills. You can't have the cameras, security, anything. All gets shut down. That manager is going to say two words to you, you know, and that's how it is. I mean, the comments are also a little skewed because you'll get a load of people who will sit there and piss and moan. Oh, safe isolation. Oh, we should always do it. That's very poor that you don't do it. That same person will fuck off the next day and go and take a cover off on a live board. <laughs> go figure. I don't get it. Right. Anyway, enough of this controversial nonsense. Let's go and do something that actually matters. Let's go and change a fuse board, eh? While you do that, I'll see if we've got rings here or not. Oh, sorry, mate. That's a ring. I was about to say it's a power off, but it is. Duh. <laughs> 0.21 again. Fucking hell, we're on a roll. Don't say that. 
<laughs> yeah, I, sh I shouldn't have just said <laughs> that. That was, a, that was a bad thing to say. <laughs> we won't have it on the earth now. Now we will. I can feel it. 0.4. A little bit higher than I was expecting, but... Uh, it should be all okay. Right. All right, so that's one ring, one ring. So you've got two rings and the rest are all radials. All right. Nice. Yeah, I'm not going to attempt. I, yeah, I have I'm seen thinking. the things where they drive them in using this, but I'm, I'm not, not putting that straight in the end of that. You need a like a, an yeah. adapter or something. But yeah, because it's obviously got the ball bearing bits in it. That yeah, I'm not. Oh, I'm going to fuck my new Bosch drill. Just to, I'll just use a hammer today. <laughs> not today. Not today. Ah, put the clamp on first. Oh yeah. Because we've done that before. <laughs> yeah, we've done that before. Is it inside? Uh, it's there. Um, is your weirer set in here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Another black thumb. Here we come. <laughs> okay. That hit something and it's not... No. It's not going in. <laughs> Good luck trying to get that out of the ground now. Which means it's concrete or something. Yeah, it's just hit a brick or something in the ground. Drill the hole deeper with the bit in it. Yeah. Yeah, I need to invest in that SDS adapter. <laughs> Fuck it, I'll just leave it. <laughs> I'll just leave it like that. <laughs> oh, you've come to take over. Fab. <laughs> How can I have lost my brand new tail cutters? Steady, mate, you're starting to put stuff back. You want to be careful. I want to go and see a doctor about that. I also get to try out my new Bosch cobalt bits. Fucking hell. <laughs> that's, that's quite posh. <laughs> I almost don't want to get them dirty. One of the things that I have found with these um, earth rods, when you're driving in these earth rods and you've got the, the clamp on the top to tighten up, um, I do find these brass bolts that come with the earth rod. I tend to find that once you've tightened them up and walked away, I've had it a few times now, where you come back in like six months and that bolt has just snapped in half of its own accord and it's just lying on the floor so the earth isn't actually connected anymore. So the way I get around it is uh, what I've just done here. I literally just do this. I've got my 20 mil box there. You can actually buy one which is a dedicated, it's actually it's a earth box, but it's uh, basically a 20 mil terminal box with a hole in the bottom uh, and a label on the top is <laughs> it's exactly the same thing. Uh, it's just a third of the price. Uh, but anyway, for the actual rod, this is the bolt I was talking about. I just put a stainless steel bolt in. Because uh, if you put that bolt in, I find that if you, uh, once you tighten up and walk away, hot, cold, hot, cold, that bolt actually snaps. So I do away with that bolt and put a stainless steel bolt in. Uh, and that's the way I do it. It tends to, I just find it's, uh, I can sleep at night if I do it that way. All I've got to do now is put a bit of Copex on there and just a bit of conduit all the way up the wall, up there. Okay. Right. Right, that is her about there. Thank fuck for that. That little lid can go on. I don't think you actually have to use these boxes. I think it's just a... Uh, I think it just looks neater when it's finished. Just gives it a neater finish. I'm actually cheating here and I'm using a label off an earth, an earth band, but that'll do. I'm gonna have to go back, oh, I'm gonna have to go back to screw fix again for about the fourth time. What do we need, a 16 amp CBO? Um, radial, radial. That's a light, no, actually that's a light. 2.5 so a radial and if I remember rightly we've got a 20 amp all right we need two more of them all right I'll go and pick them up I'll, then I'll run this I don't need them like right now yeah right now. I'm gonna get I want to get this earth rod in first yeah in fact that earth cable's actually ready to go through if you want oh, cool. I'll do battle with that I'll drill a hole first actually <laughs> uh. <laughs> Sorry about that. Ah, I've just dropped the nut. Ah, oh, just done it again. Fucking 
twat. Right, I'd say that's about there. Right, earth rod, done. Right, while I've been off camp, so we've just been going on with other stuff here, um, I actually meant to show you this, the board's actually, I'll show you the board in a second, but uh, we had to take one of these out. The I mean, they're basically like a super old version of an RCD. That's better, I've just taken the cover off so you can properly see it, but uh, it's a simple enough design. Uh, you've just got your live and neutral out at the top, and then down here is your uh, your incoming live and neutral, and then this and that sense pin there, that's where your earth connects to the unit. Um, they were a good, the idea behind them, I mean, it was basically just, it was a, a, one of the very first sort of RCDs that were about, but they were flawed in the respect that for these, for these to actually to trip, the, the, earth, the, the fault current actually had to pass down the earth cable, which as you know, unless, you know, there's no guarantee that it would actually flow through that device, because it, it'll always take the path of least resistance, and that necessarily wasn't always the path of least resistance, so Although it was a good idea, these were phased out relatively quickly because they just had the flaw in the, in the respect that there was no guarantee that they'd actually switch off because there was no guarantee that the earth path was always going to be through that device. And from my understanding, that uh, if you see these on a, if you're doing an EICR and you come across these, that is a C2 if you see them, uh, so because that's not classed as suitable protection. So yeah. That was the other thing in a video we were, uh, yeah, I think it was in a last week or week before, I can't remember. I was talking about throwing, uh, throwing scrap away and stuff, and it was it was little things like those there. Um, I've just that was the old board that was here, and I've just I've just pulled out all of those. But what'd you do with them? I mean, there's nothing wrong with them, and they're nice to have because I used to have a box full of this, you know, all different brands because it's handy, especially if you're doing stuff like call outs and stuff. To have these is just they're gold dust, you know, but. <laughs> you end up just carrying so much stuff, you know, you just throw it all away. What, you know, I don't know what you're supposed to do with it all. You just end up carrying stuff for the sake of carrying it because you may or may not use it. And it's just, you know, it just takes up precious space on the van. So as much as it genuinely pains me, you just bin them, you know. Let's see what's that we've got on that. Okay, what have we got? 23 ohms. I'd say that's pretty good. Considering it took about half an hour to bash it into the ground, I think that's... A suitably low reader. But there she is, she's on. That's uh, I've got to go around and do a bit of final testing, but that's uh, that's it. She's there. This is actually Dave's effort today. Say hello, Dave. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> so, I wasn't ready. <laughs> yeah. So this is his effort. Uh, he does have a particularly good knack for fuse boards. So uh, yeah, RCBOs. Uh, we use 16 mil tails here because it's only a little 60 out main fuse here, uh, and put a new Wilex isolator in. Uh, hopefully you don't have to fit those I just think they're nice because they just make life a little bit easier for the next person who comes along because you can just, you know, just knock everything off so I've got to label it up do a bit of testing and then we're out yeah so this is the classic example in this house the, the earth rod um, the earth rod outside is actually it's basically doing sod all in this house because when you when you saw the test earlier you test the you test the rod on its own you've got 23 ohms or when you actually reconnect it and you power everything up, you actually get a much lower reading. So this is, a, I mean, this is actually picking up an earth probably through the fabric of the building. It's just picking up a better earth than what the rod can provide. All right. right, let me load that bit of trunky on the roof and we'll get out of here. That'll do. Let's get out of here. I've had enough. Right, we'll see you in a little while.